Hello and welcome to another episode of the Kid Stories Podcast. I'm Phil Bechtel. Let's get into a shout out. Evan reached out on Spotify to let me know he listens every night. That's awesome. Evan, I think if you were a character in the stories, you would be a regular kid who one day realizes he can understand birds. And then the birds start talking to you and they tell you that you're the new bird king and all the birds on earth do your bidding. Thanks for listening, Evan. Today's episode is titled The Dangers of Reading Again, Part 5. The kids, still reeling from their close encounter with the mud beasts, continued their journey through the mad warlock's castle. The dark, winding corridors seemed to stretch on forever, with countless doors leading to unknown dangers. Kalin held the map to keep close track on their turns to make sure they were on the right track. Their progress was slow as they tried to be as quiet as possible as each room seemed to have strange and menacing things. As they crept past one room, they noticed a group of tiny goblins, no taller than their knees, engaged in a fierce battle with wooden swords. The little creatures hopped and whacked at each other, their high-pitched voices filling the air with silly taunts. Looks like they're having more fun than us, Dylan chuckled. In another room, the walls were covered in shiny metal spikes, glinting in the dim torchlight. The kids shuddered at the thought of being trapped inside. Definitely don't want to end up in there, Jameson gulped. I bet that's one of those rooms where the walls close in on you. They came across a room with no visible floor, just a seemingly bottomless void. The kids huddled together, careful not to get too close to the edge. This place just keeps getting weirder and weirder, William said, shaking his head. Eventually, they reached a vast chamber filled with flickering candles and bubbling cauldrons. The ceiling above them was replaced by a star-filled night sky. But Kalin quickly realized it was not their own. Well, those constellations aren't right, she said, squinting at the unfamiliar patterns. It must be some kind of magical projection. Do we have to go through this room? William asked. Kalin consulted the map again and nodded. Yep. We need to go through that doorway over there. She pointed to one of the many doors far on the other side of the room. Kalin folded up the map and stashed it in her backpack. As usual, they were moving as quietly as possible, hoping that if there was anything dangerous in this room, it wouldn't notice them. They made their way walking on the cold stone floor among the lit candles and the bubbling cauldrons. They looked up into this strange night sky and saw shooting stars. About halfway across, three creatures appeared, seemingly out of nowhere. These creatures appeared to be made of sticks and mud, and they floated above the ground and wore long robes. The skinny creatures had no eyes, and each one had sticks sticking up out of their heads in a circle like a crown. Each one of these mud beast wizards had one hand out in front of them, with their palms facing up, and a green glowing orb floated above each palm. The kids still had their powers from the crystals they took before, and they activated them. Jameson struck first, blasting the wizards with his laser eyes. But with a wave of their hands, the red-hot beam of energy just redirected harmlessly up into the stars above. Dylan transformed into a werewolf instantly and leaped at one wizard, covering a span of twenty feet in one jump. His arms stretched out in front of him, and he attempted to grab the wizard with his sharp claws but the wizard engaged some strange magic and became transparent and ghost-like, and Werewolf Dylan just leaped right through the creature. By now, a bunch of William duplicates surrounded the wizards, each one holding his sword with two hands at the ready. Before they could charge into the wizards, a bolt of green lightning shot from each of the three floating orbs and crackled from one duplicate William to another until they had all disappeared except the original. Kalin found the perfect angle with all three evil mud wizards in a line in front of her. She took a deep breath and screamed as loud as she had ever screamed. But again, the wizards simply waved their hands, and not a peep came from Kalin's mouth. The wizards then went on the offensive, as round green balls of crackling magical energy shot from the orbs that hovered above their hands. The kids dodged the blasts, and they all ran for the nearest door. It wasn't the door they needed to enter, but right now they were just trying to escape these creatures. 
The wizards followed, floating above the ground, chasing the kids and continuing to blast at them with their strange green magic. One of the blasts struck Kalin's backpack, setting it ablaze with green flames. She slung it off her back and threw it to the ground, crying out, Oh no, the map! Kalin reached out to grab the burning backpack, but Dylan grabbed her arm, pulling her away just as the wizards blasted the backpack again, causing it to explode into bits of charred fabric and paper. In a panic, the kids fled down an unfamiliar hallway, taking turns at random until they reached a dead end. They turned to face the mud wizards who floated menacingly toward them. One last shot, together, Kalin yelled, preparing to attack. The kids steeled themselves. It wasn't looking good, but maybe if they all attacked at the same time, they could blast their way past these evil creatures. Suddenly, the wall beside them opened up. The bricks and stones actually floated apart. And the architect appeared, stepping into the hallway with them. Oh, there you are, he said. He turned to see the approaching mud wizards. He frowned. Oh, that's not good. With a wave of his hands, the walls on either side of the wizards slammed together, reducing them to a puddle of brown and green goo. With another wave of his hands and the walls went back to normal. Except now they were dripping with gross mud wizard sludge. The kids breathed a sigh of relief and thanked the architect. Yeah, no problem, he said, shrugging. I started feeling bad about helping the warlock, especially after he sent more mud beasts to attack the towns. I figured if I help defeat him, maybe everyone won't hate me anymore. He paused and then added with a grin, Also, I wanted more cookies. The kids happily shared their remaining cookies with him as he led them deeper into the castle, his memory serving as their guide now that the map was lost. The End Thanks for listening, friends. The website is kidstoriespodcast.com. Send all your drawings and things to kidstoriespodcast at gmail.com. Adios!